Hey, Jake, how are you? Hey, James. Good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. H hold up for uh, hiding from COVID like the rest of us, I assume. Is that they still do that over there in the UK? Uh, I'm not in the UK anymore. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's pretty, pretty, yeah, it's pretty bad here in Europe. So, yeah. All right. Are you still with the BBC? I wasn't sure. No, no, I left a couple of months ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, oh, where'd you go? Uh, somewhere else. I haven't, I haven't, I, I'm still trying to sort it out with my employer, like uh, my standards participation. So this is gotcha. all like, I am not affiliated right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, good to see you. I will um, have to find your replacement, I guess, and talk to them. Um, I'm not sure they're replacing me, uh, mm. but I do the, the the things that we've talked about um, in the past, like recently, uh, that's still being picked up by my colleagues. So that's still being picked sure. up by uh, uh, former colleagues. Sorry, wow, I still, <laughs> you tell I still haven't let go yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's All right. They're still hey, everyone. The, the, okay. Go on. <clears throat> Now I know my audio works. Great. Good. Yep. Keep going. You don't have to stop on my account. <laughs> oh, we we're just nah. catching up. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Jake, your video is potato quality. Oh, my God. That uh, looks pretty good for me. <laughs> no, it's pretty potato, mate. <laughs> All right. Why don't I, uh, <laughs> why don't I stop it? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, we need to see your, you know, your shining happy face. All right. <clears throat> It's just, you know, a very uh, pixelated, shiny, happy, happy Sorry. face. <laughs> Maybe I should get the green screen. It's interesting. I, I think it's you, not him. I, I see Jacob fine, and I see you pixelating sometimes. <laughs> You're fine yeah. now. Well, I'm using the uh, just I'm using the uh, the web interface, so that might have something to do with it. Yeah, the pixelation's coming in and out on you. Okay. Yeah, I, I see you as a little bit choppy, Kyle. It looks mostly okay, but... Uh... <laughs> oh, man, I've got, uh, you know, I'm using Cake. Uh, I've got low pings everywhere. I've got Cake also. Yeah, it's... Uh, um, Shit works. But, but that won't that won't address necessarily the bend, just the, uh, just the turnaround time. Well, yeah, but I've got, I think I've got ni uh, like nine megabits up. So should be, I mean, more than enough for the quality of the video. Uh, oh, maybe here. I should, uh, you know, I've got, I've got obviously a, a multicast video stream running. that has been up for a few days. Um, maybe, I, <laughs> maybe I should turn it off. Just well, no, but isn't there only one outbound stream? So, you know, no, that's like it, the point, it's, right? It's inbound. <laughs> oh, so, well, uh, well, even, even, yeah. yeah. Should be but fun. it's still only one copy, right? So yeah, it's just one copy for me. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Eric. Morning. All right, I'm gonna go find the uh, meeting materials since we've got one minute left until we start. <laughs> no, no, be serious, right, guy? You need to be serious until the job. <laughs> Hello again. I haven't seen you in hours. Yeah, Thank indeed. <laughs> Uh, oh, meeting materials.
I mean, we're going to wait a few minutes anyway for Leslie to show up. Assume she's stuck in another meeting or something like that. I guess Spencer said he's uh, not going to be here for the first half. Um, and I haven't yeah. heard anything from Ali, so I don't know. Like even to, like at all since the start of the flurry of activity this past mm -hmm. week? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he might be out this week or something. I, I don't know what. I, I hope he's okay. I have no idea. Let me see if I can find Ali on Slack. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Maybe we might as well chat while waiting for. You changed name again, Warren. I did. I finally figured out how to make WebEx mostly let me change my name. I'm quite uh, pleased with that. Yeah, how do you do that? Because <laughs> I need to do that. <laughs> so, what I did is I went through my browser and I removed all cookies associated with WebEx. And now, when I start WebEx before it, before I join the meeting, on the top left of the corner, there is a, um, like, you ha it has your name with a little pencil icon, and you can change it. Um, before I deleted my cookies, it wasn't giving me that. I don't quite understand how the WebEx app is getting information out of my, you know, browser cookies, but something, something, scary, something. So... Um, by the way, I pinged Ali, and Ali just dropped off another call. He's about to be joining in a, in a minute or two. So he, he just standards groups transition. <laughs> yep. So we're while waiting, we're I'm random. I'm punching for the pencil. <laughs> I, think it's, I think that you get that only when you join the meeting. So, uh, you know, delete all, your, delete all of your cookies, quit WebEx. When you come back in, just before you join the meeting, you get a in the top left of the WebEx. At, at least that's how it is on the, you know, macOS version. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm on. Yeah. Okay. Zoom lets you do it during the meeting, which is funny because you can change, during the meeting, you can change who you are. Yep. I mean, it IRC depends on fun if you are participants, right? If you are the chair, you don't think it's fun, but it's okay. <laughs> the the reconnecting one that some kid apparently did year, a month ago, I think has to be the most brilliant choice of a of, of name to do for for logging in by <laughs> that kid is that kid should get like just passed that that's who you were just you know promoted that's that's brilliant <laughs> i don't know i i learned that uh <clears throat> for the uh for the ietf presenter account uh to log in in an in an incognito window because otherwise like i will i am ietf mops forever and i haven't been able to figure out how to uh how to stop that from being true um yeah. you know erased cookies everything right you know deleted all the local browser store and nonetheless every meeting i joined i was ietf mops so yeah that's really that's what irritating. i that's why I was changing my name was to try and test that and figure it out. And for me, it's delete all the cookies. And then after that, when you first join a meeting, before you actually enter, there is in the top left a, a edit spot. Uh, um, okay. 
at least that worked for me and has worked for me four or five times in a row now. So, so do you think that the the broader internet, you know, the the, the people that look to us to set the standards, would be terrified <laughs> to know this is our conversation? <laughs> You've obviously never joined the pre IESG telechat thing, which is, I mean, this is hugely intelligent compared to that. That's like five minutes of drivel about making coffee or like a bird I saw outside my window or something, or about infected mushroom. Hey, that that's reasonable and intelligent conversation. Infected how about all those brand new pencils and none of them work because none of them have a pointy end on them? How do I make them have a pointy end? <laughs> that's what a bread knife is for. <laughs> yeah, who needs all those ten fingers? Yeah. Oh, I just got a uh, <clears throat> just got a message from Leslie. She's uh, she's working on it, uh, presumably running into some technical difficulties. So, give it another couple minutes. We've only got one topic on the agenda anyway, so. <clears throat> on the other end, you can already start. I guess you will have some note well slide, right, at the beginning. Yeah, so can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. What does it look like on your screen? I can't tell. Full screen. Like a note well slide. Okay. Excellent. Now the date is May. It's May July twenty eighth. So something is a. My PC is wrong, no. or the summer is wrong. <laughs> or yeah, the I, I'm, I'm is pretty wrong, sure. Right? I'm pretty sure Leslie just copied it directly from the uh, the one hundred eight slide deck. So yeah, it says one hundred eight on the bottom. Yeah. There's, there's there's another standards org I participated in where they actually got somebody to read out their their version of Notewell, and they just play it at the beginning of every meeting so everybody can hear it. <laughs> Hey, welcome. Well, after we heard you for a second. Years of, yeah, after this many years of uh, sending calendars, it's embarrassing when you get an off by one hour error in your calendar. Oh. <laughs> I figured it was, t it was some sort of technical difficulty, but uh, no. Oh, I'm going to fully admit it was a. Here we are. All right. Welcome. Okay, uh, so we might as well get started. I've got the note well slide up. Um, uh, so everyone, Good. note well. Indeed. And um, here's the agenda. And and I'll take a moment to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate that this time slot is not is not ideal for many for many different time zones. Um, and uh, yeah, and. As as we we've, we've had a fairly quiet mailing list, it's nice to see people have actually come to participate in this discussion. Of course, I could have spent the last ten minutes uh, trying to get note taker and Jabber scribe. I did not because I wasn't thinking about that. Um, anybody interested in taking notes? Like I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can handle the Jabber scribing, but. Anyone? Notes? I can volunteer to do part of it if somebody else would be happy to help out. That would be great. Thanks, ADD Working Group. Um, yeah, we, we already had that conversation about how how change your name on WebEx can be hard. <laughs> uh, there was also a question from Spencer about where are we actually doing the um, shared note-taking page and i'm not sure i didn't get a chance to solve that as i was trying to solve my calendar issues yeah does that so does it not create an etherpad link for um i just pasted the link to the the commit codim stuff in the chat of the webex so you should see it okay. it's anyway if you go to google for iatf upcoming meetings you find the the mops one and then you get the etherpad which is now the codim ah, nice. codim so, Excellent. What you can do with all of that, right? <clears throat> Great, thanks. I will get that sent out to. By the way, when I do this, do the slides disappear? No. Oh, excellent. That's 
better even than Mac OS. So I just switched to a different virtual desktop and it's still broadcasting whatever was in the, in the, in the slides window. If you're doing it full screen, then it's probably its own virtual desktop. Uh, no, it's well, it's not actually full screen. It's just a window, um, but it might be pulling it directly from the from the uh, the X uh, uh, paint whatever wherever it's painting the the buffer that it paints to. So I don't know. I, <clears throat> I have, this is a an area of the technology stack I have never looked into. Great. Um, so again, thanks, Glenn, for volunteering to work on the um, minutes. And now that we all have the link, I'll invite others to get in there and help with the note taking. Quick question: um, Are you going to be running through um, issues from um, a slot or um, um, GitHub? If that's I want the. Yeah, that's the part of the plan. Okay, yeah. then I can copy and paste those over. Does that make things easier? Okay, great. Um, so we have note takers. We have described in the form of Kyle. Thank you all. Any bashes to the agenda? Not hearing any. Um, then we'll move on to effectively handing the mic over to Jake after I take the opportunity to thank Jake for putting together the draft text and thinking through the issues that we're going to uh, go through today. So over to you, Jake. Uh, great, thanks, Leslie. Um, do you want to bring up my slides? Uh, and yes. we should also thank uh, Stuart. Um, he also posted some text to an issue, uh, I'm sure, to address one of the issues. Uh, it's, it's good to have some motion on this. Um, and I'll give a little, so my slides are here. Update no, on just give me a second. Are. I'm still wrangling the screen sharing and how does that look? Yep, looks good. Excellent. Uh, all right, so this is what we're talking about. Uh, I'm Jake Holland. Let's go to the next. Um, so what we'll go over today is uh, we have milestone uh, in our working group uh, milestones list. Um, we'll need to go over where we are on that. Uh, there's been a couple of proposed text updates, uh, one of which uh, tries to address the um, issue that we talked about in our last meeting about the uh, a section on the addressing latency considerations um, and giving mit giving mention to um, some of the protocols that there are concerns about scope. I'm trying to cross it on this side. That side will be. I am hearing. Yeah, somebody's somewhere. not muted that thinks that they are muted. Yeah. You get, uh, it looks like, Raman, can we? I don't think I can. Yeah, thanks. Go. All right. Um, yeah, I just muted all the people who aren't speaking. So. Great. Uh, you still hear me? Okay, good. Uh, Okay, so the uh, there's two issues uh, that have been that have gotten some updates. Uh, I I plan to spend the well, maybe it won't take very long, but uh, one of them had some scope questions raised, and so we'll go over that. Uh, I'll give an update on the solicitations we're seeing, or not so much, and uh, go over the kind of list of open issues, um, and seek some comments. So uh, yeah, next slide. Uh, the short answer on our milestone status is that we're behind. We were supposed to be aiming to go into last call this November. Uh, I, I gather, at least from my side, this has been severely impacted by the sort of crazy world we live in this year uh, and the, the demands, the unusual level of demands coming out of that. Um, you know, I, I do think there's still interest in this topic, I think. We've seen, you know, certainly on my side and uh, and from at least some of my co-authors, I, I hope uh, I hope all of us um, and uh, the um, so I, I think there's still the will to to finish this up. 
but we're going to have to move the milestone. So um, I I'm thinking March or July would be reasonable. I know for myself, I'm still planning to have uh, uh, an unusual level of demands on my time through about November, uh, through about February at least, and and uh, perhaps into March. Um, but I would nonetheless aim to carve out some time to work on this, whether the milestone is in March or July. Um, I don't know. We have any share AD feedback on consequences of moving this milestone? I mean, moving a milestone, I mean, I prefer a milestone that are delayed because you need time, but they are met than keeping the milestone in November 2020 and having nothing in March 21. So for me, I'm perfectly fine to move it uh, to March 21. And it doesn't need to be aligned with an ITF meeting. You put March and July could be any place, of course. All right. Well, maybe let's make it April. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, as long as you, I, I would say, pick something you think is realistic that you uh, that you think you can, you know, you can commit to. I mean, and, uh, you know, it's not like uh, <clears throat> it's not like your job is on the line if you don't get it done in April, right? So you know. Yeah, you never know. But yeah, okay. <laughs> so, all right, sure. Let's uh, let's let's aim for end of April. I'm hoping I have a a bit of a slack time uh after after march um so it, it does another thing is Ollie, does that, you do, yeah you do have co -authors, <laughs> co -authors, right. so so you could even take it under advisement now and confer with your co-authors and suggest a date on the mailing list next week maybe let's do that that works um ali did you want to say anything here i see he's on but uh spencer not yet well, I'm 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 good with any decision you and the working group makes. So, okay. uh, so yeah. Okay, uh, so that's that. Let's go on to the next. Right. So here's the one of the driving uh, considerations for having this in our meeting. Um, we had uh, we had an issue open. This was issue number three. Um, and uh, the suggestion was to include a section on latency considerations. The latency considerations were, um, you know, once you get into low latency kinds of stuff, then you kind of have to talk a little bit about uh, things like RTP or WebRTC. And uh, we had previously discussed that uh, that we should not be making as a working group recommendations on the use of those protocols. Um, to avoid kind of stepping on their toes. Uh, there's a little bit of, you know, let's say unclear sort of intentions uh, on that, that, that trying to write this text like brings forward. Um, you know, are we saying, I don't think we're, anyway, the, the opinion of several of us was that there are things we could say that would not be overreaching the uh, scope of this working group. So uh, we put together a pull request with some proposed text, uh, got some good comments on it. Um, thank you to all those that, that made these comments. Uh, and I don't know if we want to actually pull it up and look at this in the context of this discussion, um, but uh, I, I know several of the people on the call have had a chance to look at it because they gave some great feedback. So we um, can, right? I have it. I have the uh, the issues list uh, pulled up in my other browser, so I could share that window if we want to actually take a look through it. It's up to you. Um, sh sure, but the context here is really about like, you know, I, I think what I tried to do is um, is just sort of say that these are appropriate technologies given uh, different domains of of uh, latency targets and not really give any recommendations on how to use it or uh, much in the way of, it, it much beyond just pointers to the technology, just to sort of bring it up as something that's useful for someone who's trying to operate this kind of a media service um, or, or interact with it in some cases. So I think it's reasonable. None of the comments that I did get were about like, yeah, this really seems like stepping on Art's toes or anything. Um, so I'm interested to hear if 
the lack of such feedback is really uh, because we think it's fine or because this is still controversial. Uh, but I'd like to pause here and, and ask for input. I think it might be helpful to pull up the actual. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, just give me a second. Going to have to stop sharing and then share a different window. I, while the issue come out, maybe as one of the person that was feeling strongly about this, I wanted to say that the, the new text is going in, in a great direction and I like it very much. I think this thing, the use case, and which protocol could apply very in a neutral way is, is the direction to go. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Can you see that? Yeah. All right. So which issue is it? Uh, it's down there at the pull bottom request? With, the, with the higher. Oh, yeah. Pull request is probably the one. Okay. Look at. All right. Uh, it'll be the one with the most comments. Uh, do you want to look at the commit and see the whole thing in context, or do you want to get into the comment threads here? I'm not sure which is. Um, so, uh, so it, I think for the, um, for the actual commit, if there are things that you want to highlight, we can, uh, we can go through those sections and you can describe what you were trying to get at. Um, otherwise, like, I'm, I'm, you know, like, I'm not sure. sure that it's useful for people to, to read the whole thing on, yeah. you know, on the screen share. So. so let's, let's just scroll down a bit and kind of get to the part that that's uh, kind of in question a little bit further, I think. Okay. I'll, I let me, right. I'll increase the, which one, which section? Uh, I, I think the, the sort of one that matches most closely with the questions about scope is the one that's right here. This would be, um, this would be, uh, the, the kind of, ultra low latency uh, portion of the latency considerations. So here we're talking about, um, yeah, for me, this is still a bit tight to read uh, on the screen, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I can I can make it yeah, a lot bigger. Go. It's okay. just, it's, uh, it's hard, you know, I can't fit as much on the screen, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, to me, this looks fine, but okay. um, obviously the text is there. Anybody's welcome to pull it up separately and take a look. Um, so I did have some some feedback on this text. I think there's certainly some changes that, that we'll want to make. Uh, you know, it's, it was it was mentioned off list that uh, uh, we shouldn't be talking really about uh, operators have usually so far been unsuccessful. I'll, I'll be touching that up. Um, the bit that uh, that kind of so what I'm trying to do here is sort of describe context for the kinds of use cases where this uh, where trying to have sub second uh, glass to glass media latency is um, is commonly encountered and and comes up. Uh, this touches on things that are not necessarily about um, the kind of media broadcast stuff that I, that I understand to be more the focus of this group. But also gets into. Uh, I think there will still be some mention um, that the media content providers aiming to achieve this level of latency for uh, sports, which I think ties it into um, what we're doing here more. Um, talks about some of the uh, kinds of what issues that that you have to think about and uh, why it's it's. Or tries to go over a little bit of like when you're doing just a RC thing, then you're only talking. You're usually only, or even a lot of the conferencing stuff. A lot of times you're talking directly from one peer to another, um, and you're not having to go through like all the all the sort of stages of video processing um, that you do for distributing an event. And uh, you know, anyway, the the point being that we mention that uh, 
stuff that's trying to operate in this domain usually has to use RTP or WebRTC, which is built on top of RTP. And then we don't really get into like what it takes to set that up, how you have to tune it. I think I did have a mention of having to uh, uh, in somewhere of like talking about the dejitter buff buffer with a, a reference to an appropriate RFC for it, but did not like dive into details about doing that or make any recommendations for it. Just sort of flag it as when you're trying to do this, probably you should take a look at this kind of stuff. Was the intent here? Um, is there anything else? I just think I should uh, get into any questions about where this stands or whether. I think I, my only question is, you know, have people had an opportunity to digest this? Any thoughts on unreasonable objections or? Well, so the one input I'll make um, is I don't know if people have been following. There's been a discussion over on dispatch. Uh, involving a proposal there for doing a media ingest for uh, effectively uh, WebRTC, which is, um, you know, the, the real use case, as I understand it, is really around this ultra low latency ingest mechanisms so that they can do uh, live streaming of things like games um, through WebRTC. And so um, we might want to cross reference here or link up somehow. This discussion and, and make note of that, that that's taking place over in that other group for a transport for ingest for ULL. Um, as a, as one of the co author of the of the proposal, I can maybe give a few details. This is just a, a signaling and control protocol. So web RTC uh, RTC web at IETF had only the the media stack and the encryption, but it didn't have the signaling. So people could not use it like RTMP or SRT or RIST. You need to have a proprietary control or signaling protocol that comes with it. You can see it as the same thing as RTSP and RTP. RTP taking care of the media and RTSP taking care of the control. So when we check the charter of MOPS, the control of the media transport protocol was out of scope. So that's why we put it at uh, this path. And it looks like in concept, it's the same as RTSP that was designed within the M music group. So we suggested to the to dispatch that that might be a good working group to land uh, further discussion and further work on it. But yeah, it, it can be part of that discussion. But uh, again, I want you to be respectful uh, to the to the mobs charter. Yeah, I think that's great, and uh, and and I think it is a good point, Glenn, to to reference that that work is ongoing and where. Right. Um, some of the comments noted that uh, th there was one comment about like this doesn't reflect the sort of ongoing changes to uh, what's going here. So I think there's going to be an update that tries to fold some of that in, um, and. Uh, uh, there also is uh, a good thread. I think it might be this one further down where um, uh, maybe raise the idea that we need a, another issues. Yeah, that, that was the, the, um, oh, the yeah, yeah. that we, we maybe should do another issue referencing the um, there's an SVA doc that lays out the, uh, the sort of uh, best practices according to the SVA. Uh, and defines a bunch of workflow stages that are a useful uh, way to look at things. And so um, it, it came up during the discussion of, of how this part works that it probably is worth trying to lay out the, the workflow stages and give some overview to like, what are the kinds of networking considerations that you have if you try to use an IP network to uh, do the transport for these, uh, between these different sort of uh, uh, working stages. Um, and, you know, again, which, which technologies are commonly used? What are the pros and cons that you find? What are the kind of failure modes that you hit? So I think that was a, a really good idea. Um, I got a plus one from Spencer on it, I think so far. Uh, and, and so we'll probably be raising an issue to take that further as well. Um, I think we're still in the stage that we're generating issues faster than we're closing them. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's that's just the way the way writing works, I guess. 
Uh, so, yeah, I guess I'm looking really for like, does anybody think that this does overreach our charter? And if so, could you give an overview of why, I guess? I mean, my personal point without any head right now, we can say, first, as an author, you can say whatever you want. Now, it's a working group document, so it's up to the working group to to share this point. But it's observation, right? As long as you don't try to define new protocols, we are fine. If we think there is a gap somewhere and there is a new protocol needed, then we can do something like dispatch, basically. And then dispatch should be the real working group to do it. Uh, remember a couple of meeting ago, we were talking about quick and saying quick is annoying somehow some operational issue. That's a gap somehow within quick. So we are free to document them. I think that's kind of the purpose of this document, this working group as well. I mean, this, yeah, this, this seems to be more like a, more like defining a problem statement, right? I mean, it's not, uh, I don't think it's stepping on anyone's, anyone's toes, basically saying, hey, there's this problem, we need to, we need to solve it. Here's the way that we're formulating the problem. And that can be used as, as, um, you know, input to a work to a technical working group that is actually going to start driving a solution to it. Yeah, great. Then I think, that, I I think will... that makes, I think that makes good sense. I just, I'm just trying to revisit do a quick mental revisit of all the discussions through the chartering phase of this working group. And, and while I certainly embrace Eric's perspective, um, I would like to make sure that we don't wind up looking like we are trying to do artwork in the, uh, in the, in the ops area. And, uh, that was part, I think of the concern about whether we were going to get into real time communications or not. I, I think we're still clear. Um, but I think it's important to document that we're still thinking about that and make sure that we're, you know, conscious that we're not trying to work out all the problem statements for work that gets done in every area. Yeah, that's basically a kind of a flashing light, a reminder, don't overstep, but we are far away from overstepping. And I see that Barry, the RTD is in the call. So if we were completely overstepping, we're stepping. I'm pretty sure that Barry would have said something. Right. And he wants to say something. <laughs> I haven't seen any red flags. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. If need be, what I've been seeing done in, in different groups was to make a, a separate chapter that was explicitly listed as non normative. And so that would be completely explicit and separated from the rest of an otherwise normative document. But I'm not sure. I think it's clear in the current wording, and that might not be necessary. I'm not yeah, sure. I'm, that, I'm, I'm not sure that this. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Leslie. Well, no, I was just going to say that I, I think uh, it sounds like we don't have a problem, so it's a good it's a good suggestion um, that we can keep in mind for future reference. But for now, if we don't have a problem, let's not solve one. Specifically, in a informative document. Informational document, sorry. Great, sounds good to me. Um, then I will take that as uh, you know, a conclusion subject to further discussion if anybody changes their mind, but uh, that's that's where we'll assume we are. Um, great, so let's uh, go ahead back to the slides. Good. Sorry if I'm overstepping here. I don't know the uh, usual flow, um, but I did want to just kind of clarify the document that we're working on now um, seems to be oriented largely around um, current industry practice. Is that what we're kind of attempting to do? Is kind of describe here's the status quo, here's what's actually happening, and here's you know the tensions that we see you know going forward. Um, and maybe if we specifically around protocols say, here's the protocols that are in use today, um, maybe that would help, you know, define those bounds a little bit better so that we don't inadvertently overstep. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think that was Mike English. 
if I saw correctly. Uh, so yeah, the um, yeah, it's it's a it's a good question. I think there's a lot of things about the future that we just can't know. Uh, so this is necessarily going to be a snapshot of some sort. Um, but uh, and maybe we should we should make that more clear. Uh, the goal with making an RFC, as I understand it, uh, an informational RFC is to make something that would have some archival value. So you don't want anything that's going to go immediately out of date. These things are, you know, uh, supposedly some people carve them in stone or some such. And, um, uh, you know, but um, uh, yeah, it's it's going to have to to capture kind of current industry practice and lessons learned so far, I think, because there are some that we don't know yet. So, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, next slide. Call this solved. Um, so Stuart also uh, put together a pull request. Um, it's, it's great to have uh, more of these addressing another one of the issues that was open about uh, speaking of caching and cache preloading. Um, there was a, uh, so we, you know, I, I gave that a quick review. It looked uh, like it covered some good stuff. Uh, I thought maybe, you know, with regard to the interest in video that um, certainly in uh, a lot of the kind of dash related presentations and some of the recent HLS work, there's been uh, some, you know, some discussion of, of cache footprint with regard to uh, using fragmented MP4 as opposed to TS segments um, and how much it helps for this kind of thing. Uh, so I think it would be perhaps worthwhile to stick that in there. Um, you, yeah. you meant Spencer, right? Not Stuart. St Yes, I meant Spencer. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Who the heck was I thinking of? Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, you know that guy that is uh, helping me write this, right? Um, uh, so yeah, uh, I, I would encourage people to also take a look at this. I think, barring any, uh, you know, a lot of further discussion, I'd love to just kind of get this in here before the deadline and and post a new update to the draft. Um, and uh, uh, but comments are welcome here. Uh, anybody who wants to say anything, yeah, chime in. Three, two, one, and let's go to the next slide. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention is that uh, we put the the section soliciting input with the template into the draft and. And that's been up for some time now. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of submissions on this. I, I think uh, there might have been one early on, and then sort of that was it. Um, I have recently, uh, you know, when when you're swamped with other stuff, sometimes you let things ride longer than you should have. But um, I did recently with the reminders from the chairs about the upcoming deadlines here. Um, reach out to a, a couple of people that I meant to reach out to. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm getting some uh, some good uh, points raised from them. So I'm, I'm looking to get some, uh, at least a couple of people active in the industry uh, to add some comments uh, with their knowledge uh, in it. Um, and to get some review on this, uh, just through the back channel connections that I've got. Um, I, I hope uh, a couple of the co-authors would do the same, um, but I'm not sure if we need to reach out to others through some other venues uh, and sort of highlight this. I don't know, maybe get a five minute slot on a couple of other conferences and, and uh, tell people that we're trying to write this thing, we're soliciting feedback from people who've been operating these things, and we'd love to hear your stories of, of the issues you've encountered that had to do with networking so that we can document them and get them uh, out to a, you know, capture this kind of thing uh, as advice for, uh, for people to, to know what's going on. Um, 
Do you have thoughts on, on other, you know, what other venues would be an appropriate place to announce this work? Not really. I don't know. So I've mentioned it a couple of times. I've mentioned the MOPS working group a couple of times on the Streaming Video Alliance Network working group. Who, one of whose chairs is actually conveniently on this call as well. Um, and I think that if we think we're at a point where we have specific questions where we, we could point people out the document and say, you know, could you provide a review, particularly from the lens of X? I think that that's, that would be a reasonable thing to bring back to the working group. And now I'm going to look over at the that working group co-chair, if he, see if he would entertain that kind of thing on his agenda. You mean the, um, the ADD working group? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, we certainly can include that, Leslie, and, and get the word out there. Um, I, I, you know, I, I think that strong linkage between the two groups is something we to promote, and, and that's a good example of a way to do it. Um, we also may want to um, poke at it a few different places. So, I, I, I mean, Ali, maybe there's a way we can um, throw something up on the upcoming Mile High video. Um, maybe there's like a break or something you can throw up and just let people know that. Uh, the agenda is up now, but uh, yeah, there are a couple of places where we can actually put this through. I guess there's two places. Um, I mean, does anybody have any additional places that they might suggest? Just a um, Slack uh, for video developers. Um, where it was kind of mentioned uh, briefly yesterday, but if we have specific things that we'd like feedback on, I can try and solicit that there. Yeah, I think that's that's the thing is that it would particularly for people who are not used to working with IETF documents, it would probably be most useful for us to have specific questions that they could, you know, and I guess that's the point of the template. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, does it work to just kind of take that template section and paste it into a couple of, uh, of, of spots. I think I've got a slide uh, that did that from the last, uh, you know, from when we put it in. Um, yeah, so anyway, the, the submissions we've gotten filling out the template, it, maybe the template is not right. Like that might be off-putting to people. It, it asks maybe too many things, I'm not quite sure. Um, but for whatever reason, we haven't gotten a lot of it. So, uh, you know, if we started getting a trickle of those, that would be great. Um, anybody who can make them happen, please do. Maybe uh, you should, uh, send a pointer to it again, to the mailing list, for instance. Uh, sure. I think it's just in the okay. first section in the draft. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I can do that. All right, and uh, let's go to the last slide then. Just the uh, overview of the open issues. Um, so I put green. We think we're about to close these. We've got some proposed text submissions. Um, I haven't put the, the other new one we're going to be uh, trying to add based on the feedback for the, um, uh, uh, what was it, having the, uh, the stages of the workflow and uh, their their networking considerations um but i think that'll be useful uh these are uh the other open issues i think there's a one more i also didn't mention that's more about just formatting uh in the in the text of the draft um that's uh you know just sort of editorial uh how we would you know interact better with the with the tooling and the um diff process and stuff uh, in the in the markdown, um, but the rest of these are about uh, content that we intend to get uh, folded into this draft in some form. Um, the one that Stuart mentioned, uh, Spencer. <laughs> one that Spencer mentioned. Uh, it's still, it's he, still early there, right? <laughs> uh, it, it sure. <laughs> Apparently, it's even earlier than I thought. Yeah. Um, one that Spencer mentioned. Uh, he he would love to raise to ask if anybody just sort of has an easy path here is uh, um, when Spencer added a section on, um, you know, the, the kind of unexpected uh, outcome of uh, bandwidth uh, when 
COVID lockdowns kind of started happening. Um, he referenced a, a page documenting some of the issues there um, that was just uh, sort of put up by AT&T. But the part that he was referencing was like way down the page. It was a very long document with new things being added uh, in the front. And, you know, there weren't sort of subsection references that we could uh, insert there. So, you know, he said that it, he's not sure he can pull that same reference without getting AT&T to kind of tweak that page a little bit to make it easier. Uh, it also might be possible to just sort of quote some text to look for and, and leave it alone. Um, we're also not really sure, like, how stable is this reference, I think. So I guess the main question was, like, does anybody know who we can, where to find somebody? And I, th I think the goal there would be to um, save so, some of us authors uh, a few days worth of trying to track down the right person to talk to um, or just give up. Uh, we might just decline it, I guess, the, the issue. Anyway, um, if anybody knows the right contact, uh, please send it to uh, to me or Spencer, uh, you know, to, yeah, authors list or something like that uh, offline. And um, but these are the open issues. We think once we get these taken care of, then the, the goal is that the doc would be ready to go. And uh, uh, we don't know of any others that we need to cover, although that may, of course, change as we you know, try to write things and find out we're missing other things further. Um, yeah, so that's current status. Any questions or comments about this? Um, Warren commented in the chat room. He wondered if Al Morton might be a contact at at and and I note that uh, Glenn unmuted. I don't know if he had a thought about who to pursue at at and So, so um, I'm wondering, and I haven't seen the document reference, is it sort of a, a piece put up by their contact people to explain stuff, or is it a technical document put up by a technical person? You know what I mean? Like, that might help us narrow down what group at at and is responsible. Yeah, it wasn't really a technical document by a technical person, I think, uh, although it looked like it probably had some, um, you know, some input from some such person, I would say. Uh, but I'm guessing that it's a comms document put up by their their um, public relations or, you know, public communications department pulling some data out. I know that other ISPs, that one of which I may be employed by, have done something similar. Yeah. So, uh, so then would we want to find a stable reference to it or would we like to um, provide the sincerest form of compliment and copy? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, there, I, I guess. I would recommend against copying. <laughs> yeah, I'm I trying to think of an ICF trustee. <laughs> No, I, I well, so I guess I, I haven't looked at the source material, so I don't know how outrageous the suggestion actually is. I mean, my thinking was as much like, I mean, it can even be referenced. It's not like it, I, I'm not suggesting theft, but if if you want to actually incorporate perspectives that have been perceived as, I don't know, and 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 then maybe it becomes the thing that's that eats the whole document. So maybe it's not worth it. Yeah. Um... I guess uh, we could pull the we could pull up the reference. It's there in the in the. Uh, I just I just went and grabbed it to take a look. Um, yeah, Kyle, do you want um, uh, to? Oh, where is it? Like the issues uh, list. Yeah, here I can I can post it in the chat. Um, I mean, I I just searched for. Um, I mean, if you look in the draft. Search for COVID, and it's uh, uh, down at the, you know, in, in the references section. Okay. Uh, there's a there's a link to the thing. Um, I mean, maybe there's a better reference we could find that would be more stable. But yeah, Sorry, this, this is this the, what you're referring to. This is the link that's that's there because it's the best we had. Um, but there's not like individual links to these entries. And he was citing a specific one 
that had something in particular that we wanted that that was worth including here. Uh, I think it was the. Um, uh, it, I think it was citing some statistics that came up, right? So it, it, the way that it jumped from from a smaller uh, bandwidth utilization average to a bigger one when the lockdown started, or something like this, right? So there's like a particular date uh, that was picked, and by now I think it it may have scrolled off the page, perhaps. Um, so this is the kind of like unstable reference that we're kind of looking at here. So we're looking to get a, a more stable reference, and we think April thirtieth, I think. Uh, core network traffic was up 22% yesterday compared to a similar day at the end of February. So there's six, five bullets. And, and I think it, it might be worth and legitimate to simply effectively quote that in the text and say it's from the site. If the, if the, if the reference evaporates. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this I is think... for just a couple of sentences, couple of points. I don't think you need to. It's pretty correct to do it, right? Yeah, that, that's legitimate to be to just cite a, a few, a few bullets and then click right. and note the citation. Yeah. And, and by right. the way, in the coming weeks, there is an IEB workshop on the COVID impact on the network, uh, which is a kind of a private event, but the publication will be public, of course. So this may be worse. As well, okay. put it in the chat. Yeah, uh, I, I think the the section that's there just went through a, several different sort of separate uh, references and gave them as as examples of uh, things that have been observed and publicly reported, and just you know providing the link to it. Anybody that wants to follow the link is going to have a hard time looking at it, but I guess it doesn't really matter. We can just say what we were pulling out of it, give our source, and that's that's good enough. Okay, that's fine. So, so, so Jake, Jake, would it would it be also just reasonable to ask the group? Because I think a lot of our organizations are either publishing material informally or part of groups that are producing at the moment documents on COVID nineteen responses. Would you be willing for us to send those your way so we can include? I mean, are you looking for a lot of references, or are you just looking for one to prove a point? I guess is what I'm asking. Um, yeah, I, I think. I think we're not looking to keep rewriting the section over and over again for a long time. Uh, I think if we've got something stable, we can put in there instead. That'd be great. Um, you know, it's think, what it's the way it's phrased is sort of just yeah. here's several examples demonstrating what we saw. You know, and I think that's maybe good enough. Um, but maybe we're finding it with the late, with the newer information. Yeah, that does seem worthwhile, I guess, since it's still kind of going on. I, I think if you start by quoting this one, getting that nailed up, it's it's perfectly legitimate to see if there are other people who have data that they could contribute. And if you wind up with a mass of data, then we can figure out what to do with that. Sure. Uh, so yeah, if you if you want to send over the resources that are up, that would be helpful. Appreciated. Um, I guess that's. Uh, so yeah, back to the issues list. If there's anything else anybody wants to talk about. I guess I'm happy to talk about it, or you can just uh, add things to the comments. I put links there if you get to the slides. Um, otherwise, I think I am done. It was a, did you want to? Were there any that you wanted to talk about in more depth, other than the COVID one? Oh, uh, actually, maybe yeah. The the section on ads. Um, so I haven't heard from Matt Stock, uh, who gave some proposed text that included uh, adding himself as an author. You know. Uh, um, but I haven't heard whether he's, you know, willing to take on the rest of the author stuff. I'm kind of assuming in the absence of follow up, probably not. Um, but uh, nonetheless, I think it's still a good idea to add a section on ads, and uh, we'll probably be doing that. But um, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll reach out to him again. I think, uh, but it's it's possible his world was upended by COVID as much as anything else. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure many of us are in that same boat, yeah. Um, or by any number of things, yeah. Uh, so, 
I, I guess my tentative reaction, because I had some also some feedback on the uh, on the text of the pull request. Um, you know, I was willing to go ahead with refining that and kind of taking a submission. Uh, I'm not sure what the sort of you know what what constitutes authorship versus contributorship versus uh, you know an acknowledgement, but um, you know at this point. I think that uh, that's always a slippery slope, and and I would suggest for practical purposes, this is just personal suggestion. Uh, my co-chair is welcome to disagree with me, and and anyone else. Um, take the suggestions if they look at, like they're useful, and put him in the acknowledgement section. If if you succeed in reaching out to him and find that he's willing to share the load of authorship, not just of this section, then that can be a separate discussion. Okay, that sounds good. Um, yeah, I, I certainly think that that there's a lot of value in adding something and going over the the, you know, the considerations about advertising with regard to operating video services and especially you know where it impacts networking. I think that's a great suggestion. Absolutely, uh, the text of it I think needs needs some work a little bit. Uh, the one that's been posted, but I'll just kind of take the input as advice. I think it falls under the note well, certainly. Um, you know, so I'll just use that as guidance at this point. Let's see good. if there's any further developments. Um, Sorry, I had to step away for a second. Is this um, Matt Stock's pull request? Yeah. That's okay, I, I work on that, so I, I'm happy to pick that up and, and work on it more um, and consult with him. Okay, yeah, um, I, I don't think I've met him. I, I think it's a, it's, you know, valuable discussion, worthwhile point. Um, I'm not sure, you know, we, we'd have to have a, a third, I think we do have space for another author if he's really interested in becoming an author. Um, I don't know with the co-authors whether, you know, we'd have to, we'd have to come to some kind of consensus. So if, if he wants to do that, we should have an offline discussion about it further. Um, that's one of the stopping points on the pull request as it stands, but, um, uh, there would be, but there's another couple of, of things to, to, you know change about the text um uh but uh yeah i mean the the contributions are very welcome and, and much appreciated certainly uh, so i appreciate you passing that along thank you mike yep Great. all right so if there's nothing else then i'm done with this bit okay all right <clears throat> I it's don't a, think there's anything on the anything else on the agenda. Well, I think the only other thing on the agenda is just um, a, maybe a brief look ahead to the actual working group meeting that we'll be having in a couple of weeks. A few weeks, I've lost track. Um, the uh, currently the agenda is fairly theoretical. I'm certainly happy to have more agenda items um, if people have things that they want to cover. Um, Jake, I don't know if you'll have the the wherewithal to do an update from the updates, today's updates. Um, well, I, uh, it I, might just be, we had an interim, here are the notes. <laughs> Here's the updated version. Okay. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> yeah. I think if you guys want to just point to the interim recording and, and resources and advise people to take a look at it, if they're interested, that sounds good to me. Um, I don't, I, I don't think we need to do another update in two weeks, really. <laughs> no, I, I, I hear you. And, I, and, and, you know, as discussed earlier, we wanted to do this as an interim to make sure we had the time to go through things thoughtfully and carefully. And, and our experience with the plenary sessions are that they're always, always a rush somehow. Um, um, so we have a uh, we have a question from the uh, from the Jabber Room. Believe it or not, Spencer asks, uh, "Who in Mops is participating in the IAB workshop?" It's a good question. Anyone? I'm not saying anyone. So I'm not with that you. on this call. So, uh, hey, Go ahead. Hey, so I'm not directly participating, but um, Jason Livingood, I believe, has submitted a um, a, a position paper about uh, COVID impacts and, and stuff like that to the working group. So 
Well, company-wise, we're, we're participating. Right, so to connect the dots for anyone who missed it, your colleague is, is, is planning to participate, so you should have some visibility into the workshop. Yes, and, and, we'll, be, and, and we'll be presenting results from Comcast into it. Right. By the way, video plays a pretty big role in the networks, no surprise, uh, since COVID hit. <laughs> it remains the number one transport, uh, you know, num the number one thing transport, even uh, when you take into account the growth in, um, you know, stuff like, uh, you know, virtual meetings. Yeah. So, um in terms of agenda items for 109, I, this is what I had shared on the mailing list, so there's no no news here yet. Uh, when we had the ITF 108 virtual, there was interest in having the Medico folks report on their experiences. Um, I, I, I or Kyle have yet to reach out to them to see if they would be willing to talk about it. They seemed interested when we were in the throes of the 108 session, so I'm optimistic that will happen. Um, and then also from 108, we had the media operations use case for an augmented reality application on edge computing infrastructure by uh, Rina and Krishna, um, draft Krishna Mops AR use case. So I'm, I'm hopeful we'll get that on the agenda. Um, so as Eric said in the chat, um, it's, it's, we're certainly open to people bringing in descriptions of work being done elsewhere um, or other experiences in video so on and so forth. So yeah, be creative, uh, make suggestions, and happy to hear any thoughts on how we can best shape the agenda for 109. Uh, is there Alex? Be oh. oh, Jacob, you started, you go. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, was there gonna be an update from anybody from uh, SVA? I know we've had several of those previously, and it sounds like there's been some progress. I haven't been tracking it. So that, that's a good suggestion. Uh, I can see about tracking that down. Thanks. It's, do, do, do we want but some time for uh, new groups at the IETF with charter could be of interest to you to MOPS? I'm thinking specifically of the new um, SFRAM group, which is media encryption independently of the transport protocol, or maybe web transport that just been created. Um, uh, with uh, uh, Will Low from Akamai as a, as a chair. Is that some, something that would be interesting to the group? I think it certainly would be. Um. Well, I will follow up on the list then. And, and basically, I really see this group, if it's in, an, in another working group, there is a presentation or a draft which could be interesting for MOPS because it's about media and operation. I see no problem at all to have the same author presenting once into the real working group. And this one here, just for information, right? That's, the goal is to get really cross area, cross working group collaboration. So yes, Alex, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Great. I appreciate the input and wish I had updated the dates and footers on my slides, but life is like that. Um, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I'm just going to go crawl off now. Um, anything else? Kyle, do you have anything else? I wait till you step out of camera before I ask you. Sorry. No, I don't, I don't have anything else. All right. Well, and I will thank everyone for their time. And again, thanks to Jake and his co-authors for all the work on the document and look forward to talking to everybody in a few weeks. Yeah, thanks to everyone. Make sure that you've uh, you've all signed the virtual blue sheets. So, And I got here just in time. Thank you all. Bye-bye <laughs> <laughs> to you, timing, Spencer. Spencer. Well played. Yes. Very well played. See, see you on the mailing list. <laughs> thanks for joining, Stuart. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Let someone else explain that. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.